Hello everyone, you're very welcome to this video on how to create web pages. So we've already seen how to create web pages using HTML, but as I'm sure a lot of us are aware, there are other ways of creating web pages. So you can go into a Word document, for example, type things in there and then save that as a HTML file, and that'll create a Word document for you, no problem. Another way is to use a web authoring tool. There's lots of different web authoring tools available. Um, some of them uh, you have to pay for and some of them are free. Uh, common ones include uh, Front Page and Dreamweaver and things like that. The one I tend to use is called Composer with a K. It's a nice, handy, lightweight, simple web authoring tool. So if you go into Google and just look for the phrase Download Composer, um, you'll find the Composer website has a has a link to download the the authoring tool. And it, the, its logo is a, the world, a globe, with a, a quill, a writing feather, covering, obscuring some of it. So then if we click on Download Composer, it'll start downloading the program for us. We all know the story. The download process takes a while. Then we, we, we've got an executable file in our Downloads folder. We double-click on that, and then it says, can, can I install Composer? Then we click Next, 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 often not reading a word of what's being said until eventually it says finish, and then we've got Composer installed. What that means ultimately is when I click the start button of my uh, system, I'll see that the Composer program is now built into, installed as on the menu. So then I can create web pages almost exactly the same as I'd create a Word document. So for example, I could write hello world, I can select that text and make it bigger simply by this, um, a little, the, the letter A, small and bigger. If I click on the, the bigger button, it makes the text bigger. If I want to make that a heading one, I can go up to the body text and change it to a heading one. I might need to make it a bit smaller then, but now we know the search engine will index that in a different way. I might want to create a link. So if I just want to create a link based on text, I could say, for example, Google link. Make that bigger so it's clear. So if I want to make that text active, make it an active link. Up here on top, I have new, open, save, publish, browse, undo, redo, anchor, link, image, table, form, HTML, and CSS. So link is what we click on, and we say where we want to go. So we want to go to HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. Okay. And if we look at that text now, it's hypertext. That is to say, um, if we click on it in a browser, it'll go to the Google homepage. That's fine and well. We might also want to add an image to this web page. So let's, the same as Word, we'll hit return a few times to bring our, our text down, and then we click on image to insert an image. Where do we get it from? Let's find an image. Um, let's say we'll, we'll select this image, and it's the image of Quant, a search engine. And we go, OK. So we've got that image there, we click on it, and we can see it becomes an active box. That means we can t take the corners and make it smaller, or take the corners and make it bigger. It's an image now, but if we wanted to make it a link, we click on it again, and then we click on the link button. And then we tell it where we want it to go. So let's say http colon slash slash www.quant.com. And that will be an active link then to the image. The same as Word, we can select this text and cut it. And maybe move that down in between those two. Make it smaller again. Or we can select this text. And cut it. And put it down at the very end. And we can use the delete key to get rid of any extra spaces we've produced. Sometimes when you delete things, it gets it gets a bit confused. 
things you're trying to unformat. We might want to put this image in the middle so we can see the justification buttons here. So center justified, we click there. If we want to insert a table, let's say we want to insert a table that's uh, two rows across and two rows down, and we want it in the middle of the, the screen, we go, we can click on table, and then it creates, it gives us a grid, a six by six grid, and we just move the mouse around it. If we put the mouse in the top left hand corner, it says, oh, you, you want me to create one cell. If we move it across, you want me to create a two by two, we can move down and it's saying, do you want me to create a six by two cell? Let's just do a two by two. So if we click on, on, on the two by two, then our table, a two by two table appears. Then we can make it smaller simply by dra dragging it across, formatting it to the size that we want it to be which is great. It gives us all the control in the world in terms of uh, where we want to put it and then center it. And then we could say row one, row two, row three. That should really say cell instead of row, but anyway, row four. And I can select this text. Again, make it bigger using the big A button. I can center it using the formatting button. And then I've got a web page with lots of different information on it. Lots of kinds of stuff. In reality, I'm probably going to type a lot more text in. But anyway, now I'm going to go File, Save As. I need to give it a name. So the name of the web page doesn't really matter. There's only one name that's special. If I want to tell the system that this web page is the main home page, I normally call that index. So just for fun, we'll call this index. That's the name of the page. It'll get the extension .htm or .html. Then it'll tell me where, ask me where I want to put that. So I might put that in my Applied Blended Learning site on my Composer page. So if I save that, that web page is there now. And if I click into the folder I saved it into, it'll allow me to open it in a regular browser. So let's right click and open it in Chrome. And this is what I've got. I've got my page with my links. And if I click on the Google link, it, it, it would give me a Google link if I put in Google address correctly. Dot Google. So this is the, the page that I've got now. And if I want to close that, I can close it. And if I want to re-edit it again, I just right click on the name of the file and open with, I have a choice to open it with Firefox, Chrome or Internet Explorer. They're browsers that allow me to view the page, but if I want to edit it, the next one down on the list now is Composer. So if I left click on that now, I can um, go in and fix the error so I know my Google link was wrong, so I'm going to change the link. I had a comma in instead of a full stop. So now it's google.com. Okay, and I think I might center that. And it's centered now. So then I'll save that and close it. And then if we open it in a regular browser, left click open with Chrome again. Then if I click on my Google link, it's working perfectly well. So that's a very simple introduction to Composer. I think it's a really neat, simple, lightweight tool. All the features you require are there. Uh, creating links, creating, adding images, creating tables. You can also, if you want to, there's tabs down here to look at the text. But I can also look at the HTML source code just by clicking on source. So this is the HTML. Or I can look at a combination by clicking on split. So I, if I change something here, it will show me how it changes in the HTML.
I'm going to change the word rule to test and click away. Then I can see in the HTML that that is changed. Hopefully, uh, for the most part, you guys will be able to avoid looking at the HTML too much. But I think Composer is a nice, simple tool for my money for altering web pages. Thanks very much. I hope that was helpful.